Winning the Delano Polo Orders, championship leader Matthias Taub. He received a 30-point penalty at Brazil for those collisions he had in the pit lane. Also receiving points penalties were Ben Atkins and Darren Cardell. Uh, Cardell not starting the race today. Uh, the Michelin Suns team has uh, uh, had a link up with Packer Carroll, we believe. Uh, Carroll was seen meeting with the, uh, the Mitchells down in the, uh, the Australian tour and again here this week. Um, nobody was really uh, able to say exactly what that was about, but um, uh, that could be for a drive next year. Kevin Dwyer has also said that he has plans lined up, but that he won't reveal what they are and that they may include him not driving his father's famous 72. And if uh, I read that as, that Kevin Dwyer's seat could be taken by Packer Carroll, which is a little amusing because those two men don't exactly get along all that well. Uh, also, there's been uh, Tony Durbin, uh, the 2007 series champion, had an interesting uh, idea. Uh, we basically involved the TM Master Cup Series using an uh, ASCC-style chase system, which I think is a load of crap, but um, uh, that opinion has actually been gaining quite a bit of steam throughout the, the community, unfortunately, and it'd be a shame to see the championship cheapened like that. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Matthias Taub in that gold and yellow number 10 leads the field to the green. On the outside of the front row there you see Luciano Savaral in that bright green car. Devereaux makes a good start in car number one. They're going to go four wide into one. Roderick is, uh, pokes his nose in there. Roderick gets, oh, Arto's into Devereaux again. Those two got together in Friday practice. Uh, and Kekkonen got into the back of the one car and took Luciano into the wall. Now, now remember... Adrian Devereaux is trying to go for the championship. Oh, Roderick's into the back of Taub! Taub pulled over right in front of Roderick. And the championship leader and Paulson are in trouble already. Duff in, Duff in battle back there in the 74, but Taub did not need that at all. Oh, what do we got here in the first corner here? Adrian Devereaux comes in. Low contact with Roderick and with Arto Kakinen. Kakinen has another shot at him. Michael Sykes in there and one of the Lynx cars. That looks like Davina Henson into the wall. Uh, Davina Henson, car number 11, not had the best of weekends. Qualified very well, though. And here we see... And yet, Taub just moves over right in front of Roderick. Gives Roderick no other alternatives but to run straight into the back of him. That stupid motherfucker! Uh, landed Roderick in the number 4 car. Not terribly happy with that move by Taub, but... Um, uh, Trying to chase down Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car who's trying to escape from the rest of the field. Here we have on board Michael Sykes in the red 5. That is Henton right in front of him. You can tell the difference between the Lynx cars because of the color of the spoiler. Henton's black, Cleve Nose is white. And there you see yeah, a contact between the 9 and the, and the 1 kind of set that one up. That was kind of inevitable, but at the same time I can't imagine Davina Henton is all that happy about it. Yeah, looking back at Kevin Dwyer, car number 72. That's Chris Davenport in that really brightly colored car out there. VJ Pushanda there as well. Oh, oh, Davenport's triggering another one off. Davenport in car number six. He's been in the wars again. Um, he's been, uh, well, Davenport's been uh, into the back of other cars quite often uh, during practice. He uh, got into the back of VJ Pushanda and into the back of Troy Adams in um, in uh, the second practice session. Uh, so there hasn't been too many people happy with him as Tao pits the 10 car. Tao pits the 10 car and he is not happy with Leonard Roderick, but he doesn't have any reason to be. Zach Duff in the 74 in and Davina Henton. Pit strategy is, could be all over the place because of tire wear. Chris Davenport, as I mentioned earlier, has been ruffling quite a few feathers this week. He hasn't been too apologetic about it either. He's got the... Um, uh, the well, here for the October races, we have the pink cars out in full force. We got four uh, four pink cars in the field. And, well, we got this car, Paul Lyons. Um, oh, Lyons gets punted by Quiggles Jr., but I think he might have just left his braking too late and pulled up right right in front of the Steelander. Uh, this car is usually pink anyway, because that's just uh, the sponsor Ender Construction's colors anyway. Not sure what Lyons will be doing for the 2014 season yet. Packer Carroll's having a pretty good race today. And uh, other than, other than um, uh, Packer Carroll's uh, Kevin Dwyer rumors, uh, the, C, the Michelin Suns uh, rumors, he's been having a solid week. So Packer Carroll looks like he might be finally hitting a stride, unfortunately, just a little bit too little too late. Um, so we'll have to see what he can do today. As Pliskin continues to try to run away from the field in his Lycoya, 
Uh, the 16 team has really been uh, kind of a dark horse this week as Roderick challenges in the four, but Roderick's got some damage. Bliskin trying to hang around on the outside. Look at all the mechanical grip on that Lycoya. Just really uh, kicks in, helps Bliskin. Oh, that could have been a disaster right there. Bliskin left his braking a little late. Roderick saw him coming. Roderick takes the lead. Great move there by Roderick. Two very experienced drivers up there at the front of the field. Here we have Adrian Devereaux and Arto Kekkonen. These two guys, not exactly the biggest fans of each other. Michael Sykes in the Red Five, second in the championship hunt. I think Sykes wants to get around these two guys as quickly as possible. Especially since, oh, Devereaux, we got, I think Devereaux may have gotten into the back of the nine right there. Um, so, uh, some people not playing nice early on. Pliskin and Roderick, whoa, they're, Pliskin squeezing Roderick over towards the wall. Any closer, that would have been a, that would have been a crash. Roderick fights back, though. Great stuff here in New York for the lead of the race is Roderick, whoa. Roderick gives Pliskin, doesn't give Pliskin a lot of room. Quid pro quo. Roderick tries to get, uh, take the lead, but Pliskin looks like he's going to slip away with it. No, Roderick around the outside there. And Roderick right in, right off the front of Pliskin's bows, and Roderick pits the four car. That took Pliskin by surprise, and I think that took Roderick by surprise as well. I don't think he was expecting to be called into the pits that late. Arto Kekkonen is in, in the nine car. In uh, car number nine, looks like the 11 of Henton, still in the pit lane. They're doing a lot of work to the rear of that car. As now, this is going to leave Michael Sykes up in second place in car number five. So, the red five, trying to chop into Taub's points lead. He got a little bit of help with uh, that penalty that Taub was get was uh, that... That uh, penalty Taub got at Brazil despite winning the race. Uh, so uh, Sykes' uh, championship hopes definitely boosted by that. Here is Luciano Savarola in car number three, currently running in third. He has, doesn't have a win yet this year, but he could have had two earlier in the season. However, he was taken out by uh, Leonard Roderick and Packer Carroll on the last lap in, um, uh, in both those occasions. So Luciano trying to end his career with Hodges Walter racing on a high. He does have a deal lined up for next year, but we, he hasn't been telling anybody. Uh, I have a feeling, though, that uh, the presence of a Lennard in the field might hint that where he might be going. As Melanie Klebno run, runs there in sixth place, she won here last year, but only half the field was here. Klebno would really like to win a race before the year is out, but I think uh, the fact that she's headed to Otis Walter next year might mean that she's uh, um, that could be taking things at a little bit of an easier pace. Leonard Roderick pitted the four car. He's back out. Oh, oh no, he got in the back of Chris Johans. That's Chris Johans, who was running back in 24th. That was the battle for that was the battle for 24th. Roderick left it way too late down there. Uh, that was that was a surprising maneuver. This is only lap four, so that's two uh, that's two drivers that I that I thought could really have had a great showing today. Chris Johans, top five in final practice with that 29 car. So he, yeah, so a uh, big disappointment for Chris Johans. Running, uh, running right around that, running 23rd was Ryan Matthews in the 61. Oh, whoa! As he loses it off the last corner, um, we believe he may have had a tire going down on that car. So that, uh, that not that may have uh, contributed to that. Uh, here we have uh, the battle for seventh: Packard Carroll, Lewis Kingston, and Rachel Rainsford in the 14. Rachel Rainsford in that 14 car. This is her last showing, we believe, in this Volpe uh, for this year. We, she may be back in that car next year. We doubt it, but that could be the case. As um, Packer Carroll goes by at Lewis Kingston, right but there as Kingston tries to challenge. Kingston challenges again as they're losing Rachel a little bit. Yamino Tenshi hanging back there in the 10th in the 25 car. But uh, Lewis Kingston in the 17 car. This is not the most popular car here. Uh, here in New York. I don't think I need to stress that, but um, uh, Lewis Kingston in the 17 car has been very quick all, all weekend. Look at him slide that car around. That's This could be a great move. He pulls that off. Lewis Kingston, the Avenger, tries to, uh, is going to stick his nose in there, see if he can clear Packer Carroll around the outside. I don't think he's going to be able to do that. No, maybe he is. Swings that car in wide, diamonding the corner, and look at that run. He gets off the... That was a very, very brilliant move by Lewis Kingston. He set that one up very, very early and just held it side by side and used momentum to his advantage as the red five of Michael Sykes challenges for the lead. The Welshman is trying to have a, trying to uh, end his season with another win here. And it looks like he's got a perfect opportunity as he, peaks, uh, as he peaks the nose of the red five inside Kurt Pliskin. Maybe a little contact there. 
He's going to slide it on the inside. Oh, Pliskin scrapes the wall just a little bit. I don't think that did anything to the 16 car. They come down this long straightaway. Here is the, as Kurt Pliskin. Oh, Pliskin gets into the 5. Pliskin got into the red 5. Luciano's involved. Pliskin, I saw that 16 car to slide back to the right and just hook, the, uh, just hook Michael Sykes, take him into the wall. Gave him no opportunity really to catch that thing. That was going to be... A crash regardless there, um, I think. But uh, Pliskin, I think, just uh, may have turned over into the five. We'll have to have a look at it from the aerial show. Here we go. This will have a more definite view at it as they're coming in, coming on the far end of the track. And Pliskin just hooks that, just turns hard to the right, and just takes Michael Sykes out. There's really no excuse for that. There And there's no other way around it. Pliskin just straight up took him out. There was plenty of room. Not a whole lot of room, but there was enough room, and Sykes had the spot. He definitely had the spot. I don't think Pliskin had uh, has too much, ex too many excuses there. Surprisingly enough, I don't see the time penalty being thrown around. Tom Delgado is in this race with the Lenard in uh, in the Ocean Motorsports Lenard in 17th. Um, this this car number 37 is uh, actually not been running all that badly. He's running up in 17th. He's been. Um, about in the mid 20s most of the practice sessions and it uh, looks like he's picked it up delgado very much a hometown hero here along with danny southern um but uh, tom delgado uh, the american devil really trying to um uh, really trying to improve uh, his reputation here maybe get himself a full-time gig again kate taylor is up to eighth in um, car number 56 but uh, we believe this team is pulling the strategy card because um uh, they're running everything uh, they're running everything a bit more conservatively than uh some of the other teams are, and as far as uh, tire wear is con as far as um, tire wear is concerned, this 56 car has not had as many problems as anyone as everyone else seems to have had. As Melanie Clevno comes into the pits from lap se on lap seven, she was running in second in car number 12. Uh, we got the first round of pit stops, nearly cycle, nearly complete, very very spread out as you may notice. Greg Woodard is battling Tom Delgado. This is for 26th as we have bumper tag. Greg Woodard gets poked by Delgado. Delgado says, move out of the way, rookie, and around and around goes Delgado. Woodard comes in again, very, very hot in the 41. The Phoenix performance, Lycoya, on the inside of Tom Delgado's Lenard. Lenard is Lycoya's parent company, and despite what Lycoya's PR tells you, I think it's it's a little obvious that Lenard kind of tells them what to do um, in a lot of instances. As here we have Chris Davenport and um, Azure doing battle here. Uh, Davenport and Azure have made contact already, but we missed it. Dav oh, Davenport's into the back of the 46, and Davenport turns him! Chris Davenport turns the... just turned Azure! I... there's... No, I don't know what Davenport was thinking, but he wiped himself out, thankfully. That was an insane maneuver by Chris Davenport. Definitely there's something we missed here. Because Azure makes the move. Um, Azure makes a move. Davenport tries a crossover. Then he moves back over to the left, hooks the back of the 46, and at a pretty high and at relatively high speed, takes him straight into the wall. As they're looking off the back of Kurt Pliskin at Tom Delgado, and um, uh, well, his uh, teammate Greg Woodard way back there. Actually, Delgado was believed to be driving for PSI in this race, but um, Leonard stepped up and put a deal for Delgado to run to run this car, um, that 37 car, the number that we've seen Delgado run quite a few times in his uh, Master Cup Series career. As uh, we're looking off the side cameras on the uh, number 16 car, a, uh, uh, these cameras were, uh, the first time I can recall them being used uh, were by the team that we now know as Volpe Racing Team back in 2005. But uh, good to see that we have, good to see that uh, uh, we'll get a good use out of them there. As uh, Tom Delgado, whoa, leaves that breaking for turn one a little bit late. Bliskin gonna try to get on the outside of Delgado. No, not good. Well, right side of Delgado, rather, because inside and outside does change quite a bit depending on what part of the course you're in. Um, yes. Oh, contact! No, they don't. They don't uh, take each other out. Pliskin looks like he may have the advantage here, and it looks like Pliskin is going to be able to clear the 37 at this part of the track. And uh, no, not quite. Delgado for trying to fight back, and he's still there. Tom Delgado. This is great stuff here in New York. But, uh, oh, Delgado into the wall in the 37 car. Just kisses the wall. 
It was a little hard to keep track of uh, where Delgado was on the roof camera for the 16 as Greg Woodard now joins the back. This is all the way back for like 22nd, 23rd place. Uh, but this is one of the best battles on the racetrack. That's why we're focusing on it as Greg Woodard tries to stick his nose in. Around the outside of the 37, Delgado shuts the door, so Woodard's going to try the other side. Not, who doesn't quite have enough to go there. Brandon LaRue on the 24 car has already been in the pits uh, twice. He's running back in 33rd. Uh, so he, that is the race leader right behind him. He kisses the wall. Pulls right in front of Adrian Devereaux, and Devereaux turns him. Adrian Devereaux has none of that and turns LaRue into the inside wall. And uh, Adrian Devereaux had absolutely none of that because um, I don't really know how LaRue couldn't have seen him coming, to be quite honest. But um, Ashby up in second now. You may notice, uh, you may notice many of the cars in front have... Um, well, there's not much going on in front of Adrian Devereaux at the moment now that he's disposed of the 24 car. But uh, you'll notice also that Paul Lyons back there in car number 44 has been has been into the pits again, uh, and Lyons uh, just recently came in, so he does have fresher tires, and here comes Lyons, and there's really not much Ashby's going to be able to do about it here, because this is one of those instances where the lap car is faster than the leaders by a quite a significant margin, and um, Ashby lets him go, doesn't waste a whole lot of time with him, and um, now Lyons is going to try to work on Adrian Devereaux in the, in the number one car. Uh, Devereaux, uh, not the most thrilled to have Lyons running up there with him. Ashby was pretty, uh, was, uh, Ashby was, uh, cooperating and let Lyons go by without a problem. Uh, but you can see how much Lyons has pulled away from Adrian Devereaux in car number, or uh, pulled away from Ashby in the 55. Oh, Devereaux into the one! Oh, that's pretty hard into turn one! And Adrian Devereaux in that one car... Came into one. Very, very hard. Oh, he's slowing. Adrian Devereaux slowing. Ashby gets into the back of him. But Devereaux's got a problem. He's got a definite problem. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a suspension failure for car number one. Devereaux slowing. He's bringing it to a stop on the on the side of the course. And Adrian Devereaux is out. Devereaux climbs out of the one car. And that's his race done. Very, very early. Very disappointing for the Frenchman, who won six races last year. He's won three this year. As uh, Tom Delgado and Greg Woodard continue to do battle here. Uh, the Lycoya v. Lenard. Oh, Woodard into the wall as Delgado shut as Delgado shut the door. Woodard carried too much speed in the turn one anyway. He wasn't going to make that one stick. But uh, now, Delgado, again, being very defensive with that 37 car. Woodard's going to stick his nose in here sometime soon. Here he comes. Delgado not quite going to give him enough room. Delgado has the preferred line. Delgado's going to hang on right now. That 41's not giving up, though. The Phoenix Performance car of Woodard trying to poke his nose in. Get by Tom Delgado. Delgado slides it wide. Delgado comes. Oh, Delgado's around. Delgado is around, and Woodard got into the back of him. Tom Delgado's into the wall. Big disappointment if I'm Greg Woodard. Uh, Tom Delgado's a former boxer. I'd be getting out of the track as soon as possible. I'd be hoping he doesn't find me. Because that looked... That did not look like Woodard was being the, uh, was playing fair there. Coming down. Now we're going to watch it right here from the overhead camera. Delgado's a bit wide. And Woodard just drives right into the back of him and turns him around. There's really no other way you can go about that. I don't think Woodard tried. Uh, I think Woodard didn't really make much of an attempt to just go around him on the other side. That part of the track's pretty wide, so uh, I don't really know why he didn't just try to just make him make a move around him on the right-hand side. It's not like he didn't have about 80 feet of space there. Uh, here's Rachel Rainsford in the 14 car, who by the virtue of other cars dropping out and pit strategy has worked her way up to second place. So. Rachel Rainsford in this 14 car, having a very solid day. And uh, Rachel is uh, one of these drivers that, uh, she's been in the series all for about, this is her, almost her eighth year competing. She hasn't been full time in a while and she's been much overshadowed by her uh, little sister Alexis and it really, I think, has sort of worked on her uh, psychologically a little bit. As Yamino Tenshi back here in third, and that's Quiggles Jr. who's a lap down. Quiggles Jr. has been in, um, uh, Pickles Jr.'s had a very, very eventful weekend, and uh, when that, I mean, mostly backwards and off the track. Um, here is the zero car of Jose Luis Martinez, who is running in 11th place. 
having a pretty solid weekend for the Alex Harrison squad. Uh, this is the only team that's running the Independence Trophy uh, that could have the opportunity to uh, defend the Independence Trophy because they won it last year with Gaspar D'Souza driving this car. Let's see if they can do it here. As we got VJ Pushanda in car number 57. He's running in ninth. Again, I think this is largely a strategy uh, a strategy call as uh, that's moved uh, Pushanda up the order as Martinez moves into 10th uh, because we've had a couple other cars hit the pit lane. As Kuznetsov in the 8 car is running in 6th place. Great job by the young Russian. He's uh, really, really impressed me in the past couple of races. If Jenny Kuznetsov in this 8 car, as Katsev's fortunes have declined, he has kept his spirits up, and that's what that team needs. As Rachel Rainsford pits on lap 14. Here is Gaspar D'Souza. Uh, as, uh, as largely because of other people pitting in front of him, has found his way up to 10th. Uh, D'Souza in this very distinctive car. Uh, we think he'll be back with Black Diamond to race. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! He moves over and, oh, into Kingston, and he, oh, contact, and... Oh, well, that was a little silly. It looked like I saw D'Souza's car move over to the right and try to shut the door on Kingston, but Kingston had his front bumper there, and the Avenger wasn't going to have any of that. Uh, I haven't seen any anything about anything about uh, Kingston maybe getting a penalty, but this is the order at half distance. It's, See Arto Kakinen in car number nine has cycled back to the lead. He's been playing, a lot of teams have been playing the strategy card, and there's a lot of different race strategies here, so it's going to be very hard to keep track of all of them. But Arto Kakinen is in the lead of the race. He was one of the first cars to pit, and uh, we've seen uh, uh, he pitted very early in the race to get himself a lot of clean running, and that appears to have worked, but here's the consequence of that. He has to pit right now, as Melanie Klevno in car number 12 assumes the lead at half distance. Cleve no leads. Ian Cooper in the 777 car has just set fastest lap of the race in the 777 car. So, Team EFR really uh, bringing the big guns here, it looks like. Uh, normally, we associate them with success in super speedways, but Melanie Cleve now in this 12 car is headed to as Walter next year. And if she doesn't win this year, I think she can feel relatively safe to know that there will be many times that we'll get to hear the Swiss national anthem uh, next year. Here's Ian Cooper running back in eighth. There's Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car. Oh, Cooper shuts the door. Whoa, now that's what we haven't called the Ian Cooper School of Defensive Driving. There you go. Moved over two lanes. Shut the door on the 16 car. That was a move that no other driver would have had this, uh, would have uh, attempted. Pliskin made a move. Cooper shut the door very aggressively. That could have been a huge, huge smash. And also a very dangerous place to do that as well. Danny Sauvin in the number 81 car. There's a lot of Danny Sauvin fans here in New York. He's running up in 11th place, having a very solid run for the Independence Trophy, which he could take the lead of today. Battle for third between Zelda Ashby and Yamino Tenchi, former teammates at DeGarmo's team a couple of years ago. But uh, Ashby in the 55, uh, trying to win a race for FPO. We don't know if FPO is going to even be back next year. There's Yamino Tenchi in the 25 car driving the midnight. I think they may have just touched. But um, Ashby trying to avoid contact with Tenchi. Tenchi in the 25 car is having just a stellar weekend. And so is Ashby. But Ashby's been flying under the radar like this pretty much the entire season. And that's why Ashby is still technically a championship contender. Here's Packer Carroll in car number two just in front of that battle. Packer Carroll up in second. So Packer Carroll could be looking at, um, could be looking at a really... A really, really big points day and a really big confidence boost headed into his final two races for Volpe. However, there's a slight problem as he has uh, 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 two of the crowd favorites, Yamino Tenchi and Zelda Ashby, clamoring all over the back of him. So he doesn't really have too many opportunities. Uh, many ch oh, and he, hits, he scrapes the wall as uh, must have been a thunderstruck there by that move that um, uh, the 25 of Yumino Tenchi just pulled on him. And... Uh, Tenshi trying to pull away from Ashby, but Ashby's not giving up at all. Packer Carroll, I don't think, has enough tires left to come back at them. His tires, he just burned them off too early on. As you see the 55 trying to get around the 25. Tenshi not giving up, and neither is Ashby. This is fantastic stuff here in New York. But Ashby trying to go around the outside, coming on, onto the main straightaway. No, Tenshi has got the better run coming off the last corner. You mean Tenshi's going to hold on and going to move up to second. Here's the red five of Michael Sykes back down in, I do believe, 13th place. Zach Duff from the 74 behind him has had a very, very uh, stealthy year in that car. It's a little hard to say given that paint job. But uh, 
Oh, this could be a mess right here. We got Zach Duff in. Uh, we got a lot of cars in uh, very close proximity. Uh, Peter Short there in the 22 car. Oh, J oh no, he gets into James Davidson. Uh, Jim Davidson in the uh, in the 222 car just got hooked by Peter Short. Four-time world champion Peter Short got into the back of the 222 car. Haven't seen any penalty. Any haven't seen the active time penalties today. There, not quite sure why. Um, but oh, there we go. Anyways, Peter Short in this 22 car. Uh, now he's trying to make a move around Martinez. Um, Short a little bit frustrated, I think, with the fact that the Tremwell that he's driving hasn't been so good in the second half of the year. And oh, contact with Martinez. He's gotten Martinez as well. Peter Short got into the back of Martinez, but I think Martinez may have moved over in front of him just a little bit. But Peter Short is now, he's got quite the hit list going as Ben Atkins in, in um, the 50 car, who recently announced he has re-signed with Tutino, is running in 27th place. His teammate, uh, Alessandro Rossini, has had the better of him all year, but of course Rossini off to Volpe next year. You have Jenny Kuznetsov is, up to, is uh, down to 16th place. He's uh, having a solid day, as is Tenshi here in the 25. And here is Davina Henton again, car number 11. Uh, Henton in the 11 car is a, quite a few laps down. I don't think she's racing anybody, but uh, no one's given her the memo that. Uh, I can't exactly repeat everything she said on the radio. Uh, and uh, James, uh, uh, Davidson there in the 2 2. Oh, contact there! Davidson into the wall! What was he doing? What was he doing? Davina Henton and Jim Davidson, both of them. That was Davina Henton turned him on Davidson on a straightaway, but hold the brake, son. As Quiggles Jr. gives Henton a bit of a bump. I'm not sure why he did that, but his teammate was coming. Um, so here we see overhead view of this. As the buildings are about to get in the way. As Henton gets into the back of, of Davidson, and Davidson just turns himself into the wall and doesn't hold the brake. Takes Henton into the wall. Uh, can we say karmic retribution, anyone? Paul Lyons and the, and the 44 car is running up in 26th place. Not exactly the day that the Bostonian had in mind, but I don't know. Oh, it's LaRoe in the 24! Brandon LaRoe spun leaving the pit lane. This, is, this race has gone crazy all of a sudden. We've had Davidson up on two wheels. Uh, LaRoe spinning leaving the pits. And Lions nearly wiped out into turn one. What is going on here? Oh boy, Lions! Paul Lions is is uh, I'm pretty sure he was a little bit dumbfounded of that one. But now we have the battle for the lead between Arto Kakinen and Zelda Ashby. Kakinen has not won since mid-season. Ashby hasn't won in over a year. Ashby in the 55 challenging the uh, challenging Arto Kakinen, but Kakinen takes the lead uh, quite easily there. Danny Savin running in 10th place in car number 81, the Full Throttle Motorsports Omeka going for the Independence Trophy. Oh, Matthews in there, too hot! Ryan Matthews came in there, well, came in there and bulldozed Danny Savin. And Savin able to get away with that one as Ashby pits the 55 and Tenshi has pit the 25. So, yes, there is Tenshi now. Yamino Tenshi into the pits as well. Arto Kakinen, car number 9 has uh, not yet come in, but uh, he is due to very soon. As there you see, he's catching Danny Savin, who is not exactly having uh, the best of days anymore. Melanie Cleveno in car number 12, working around some lap traffic, this being the 18 of Troy Adams. Uh, she's been complaining about uh, some of the back markers lately, so uh, I guess she's learned how to run at the front of a Master Cup Series race. Oh, got a car spinning in one. That's a red and black car. And there's a couple different red and black cars in the field, so it's going to be a while before we get an ID on it. Looks like Daniel Melrose. The, Aust the mad uncle, Daniel Melrose, whacked the wall. It's uh, really, he hasn't been doing much of uh, substance all weekend. That's, he hasn't really even hit anything, but at least he's not hitting anything. So Melrose... Uh, here is we're on board with Taub, who is beginning to make his way through the field. As Kevin Dwyer is spun in turn one, and and, and uh, Taub nowhere to go but right into Dwyer. So Taub, who had been running in the lower points actually, uh, has just had another setback. But that one I think could be a much bigger repair bill. As Jamino Tenchi has caught uh, Lewis Kingston and Greg Woodard, two very volatile personalities as we've seen today. Uh, Pliskin and... Wo oh, no, they're together! 
Woodard and Kingston got together there in, but now Yamino Tenchi, who's running in third, very solidly in third, might not want to be racing these two guys. Uh, here is uh, Lewis Kingston now, and Greg Woodard, Woodard gets into Kingston, and Woodard is just taking out the third place car. Greg Woodard, an insane maneuver, showing no regard for who's around him, right into the side of the 17, right into Tenchi, who's running and running very solidly up through the up in the field. Actually, Tenchi had been running in second because, as you saw in the background, Ashby had just pitted. So Greg Woodard, right here, not even close, not even close to making that one stick. Greg Woodard, car 41, that was an insane maneuver right there. And uh, that is just taken out the Clockwork Racing Midnight from a podium shot. And the Clockwork Racing team, uh, to put it lightly, they were cursing up a storm. And uh, they're on their way down to the Power Sting Incorporated Pits as Ryan Matthews gets into Kuznetsov and takes himself around this time. As Peter Short is slow on the side of the track in the 22 car. So Peter Short's day comes to an end. Mechanical Gremlins have put the 22 car, the four-time world champion, out of the race. Arto Kakinen is uh, now going to head into the pit lane for the final time in the nine car. This is going to give Zelda Ashby the lead. Ashby pitted earlier than we expected, and that could be a throw of the dice. That could be a vet that could put Zelda Ashby in victory lane. As Klevno's in the wall! Melanie Klevno is in the wall! She had been running up in second place! Melanie Klevno has just uh, has just destroyed the left side suspension of that car. It looked like the brakes had failed on that car. Oh, big disappointment for the Swiss sophomore. Scott Stoidler, on the other hand, is going to be one of the big heroes of today. He's running up in 12th right now. He has nothing lined up for next year, but uh, this is the closest he's going to get to a home race, and he is definitely impressing today. I don't see too many marks on the side of that 28 car, and the only mark there is not of his own doing. But uh, Scott Stoiler in this 28 car, Manicor Engineering, not the safest uh, to come back next year, but we hope Stoiler does. He's having a very strong race, as is Zach Duff in the 74. The Michelin Sons might take him alongside Axel Andersson, the uh, very impressive Swedish driver who is currently uh, leading the TM Lights point standings. Zach Duff running up in eighth. And um, Duff from Alberta, Canada, could be having, could be on his way to a, um, a, a re-signing his deal there. Oh, right in front of the leaders here, Greg Woodard and Lewis Kingston. Kingston moved over on Woodard, and you deserved that one, Greg. Um, that's all I think that needs to be said about that. Kingston made sure that Woodard was not going to make it through that turn cleanly. And that is exactly what happened. Lewis Kingston and Greg Woodard, these two guys, they're, they're driving like hockey enforcers out there. There's been more checks into the wall than I think um, we've seen in uh, the average Boston Bruins game, but that's besides the point. Zelda Ashby, on the other hand, not much competition in the final couple of laps. She's about to snap a winless streak of over a year as Zelda Ashby wins a thriller in New York in a fantastic run. The engine is gone! Oh, can you believe it? Right after she crossed the finish line, the engine is gone. <laughs> so, it lasted just long enough to secure Ashby's third career win in brilliant style. Kakinen and Carroll complete the podium. Rachel Rainsford in fourth. And Kate Taylor, the unsung hero of the day, comes home in fifth. Zach Duff, Ian Cooper, Yevgeny Kuznetsov, Vijay Pushanda, and Scott Stoidler round out the top ten. A lot of guys in the top ten that we don't get to say much about because they're either part-time or they don't have very many opportunities to run up at the front, but pat on the back to especially those teams that threw the dice on strategy and made it work. With only two races left in the calendar, let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship. Taub still leads, Sykes second, Ashby third, and Devereaux in fourth. Those are the realistic championship contenders. And you'll notice that Taub's lead has shrunk a little bit and that Ashby is beginning to close in. Davina Henton is mathematically eligible for the championship, but um, uh, she's 139 points out of the lead, and the most you can make up in one race is uh, 70. So in other words, if Taub scores one point, Davina Henton is out. So uh, Henton, not really realistically uh, a championship threat there. Uh, Bates, Rodder, Kekkonen, Klevno, and Sauver all still looking to put uh, a finish on a strong season. Uh, Klevno and Sauver all, interestingly enough, have yet to win a race. 
Uh, you may also notice that Zach Duff is up in 16th in points, is the highest driver in the championship to have not led a lap all season long. So, with uh, uh, so with that being said, there's also um, a Rookie of the Year battle that we still have to finish out between Yevgeny Kuznetsov, Chris Davenport, and Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. And that is going to be a very, very closely run thing. And I don't think that will get settled until uh, the final race of the season. And here's how the Independence Trophy shapes up. Only one race left to settle the Independence Trophy. Tom Moore has fended off Danny Sabin. Uh, Lechleiter is uh, still where he is. Ben Huron is really, I think, Tom Moore's greatest challenge. Uh, there are still a couple of drivers who have yet to run uh, their fourth race. Six of them, as a matter of fact, and all of them will be present for the uh, semifinal event, uh, the Round of British Columbia at the HLR Circuit near Vancouver.